In this session, we are going to describe the contents of the abdominal cavity. We will arrange the contents into six layers from our point of view as arrange it from the posterior abdominal wall up to the anterior abdominal wall. We will describe the contents of each of these six layers, which will get an idea or an orientation of all these organs in relation to each other. That in the first layer of the abdominal cavity coming from posterior to anterior. So this is the posterior abdominal wall muscles with no structures on them. That is the base where all the contents will be lying on. So what we can see here The psoas major muscle on each side, that diagram, and that is a cadaveric picture. The psoas minor here, here, the diaphragm above, here and here, that is the greatest lumborum on each side, that is the transverse abdominus. Just lateral to the quadratus borum. That is the iliacs within the iliac fossa anterior to the iliac bone, taking origin from it. So that is the wall of the posterior abdominal part, which forms the base for all the organs and other layers to come on from that first layer up to the sixth layer. It is only the muscles which form that part of the abdominal cavity. If we come to the second layer, these are group of nerves and vessels in front of the first layer, in front of the muscles. Those are the subcostal nerve and vessels coming from under the lateral arcuate ligament of the diaphragm, the iliohypogastric and the ilioinguinal nerves. Then the lateral terrace of the thigh will be crossing in front of the iliacus muscle. The other three structures lies in front of the quadratus lamborum the subcostal nerve and vessels, the iliohypogastric and the ilioinguinal nerve, the genitofemoral, as we said, in front of the iliacus. Then the genitofemoral nerve in front of the psoas major. Then the sympathetic trunk on each side of the vertebral column, that's one of the nervous tissue. But remember, or how you have seen, you can see here that the right sympathetic trunk is under the right edge of the inferior vena cava. You have to remember that all the time. That is the abdominal aorta or a, 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 a sketch, a line in the line of the abdominal aorta. Another one diagram here for the inferior vena cava lying in front of that sympathetic trunk. So here also will be the gonadal vessels in front of the psoas major. Above, this is the last strip where the subcostal nerve and vessels will be coming deep to it. And this is, as we said, the lateral arcuate ligament. So the second layer in general is formed of a number of nerves and vessels. That is the second layer. On the right side here, you can see the psoas major two edges cut to show the lumbar plexus, which is embedded in the substance of that muscle or considered contents of the psoas major, that is the lumbar plexus. When we come to the third layer, 
So the first layer was the, the muscles forming the, the, the floor of the, of, the, uh, of the abdominal cavity. Then on the floor, the nerves and the vessels. On the nerves and the vessels, you can see the two kidneys and the two ureters with the blood supply to both of them. That is the third layer. Here, before we proceed, you can see now the kidney lying in front of four muscles separated by four structures. The four muscles are the diaphragm, the transverse abdominis, the quadrate lumborum, and the suas major. The four structures are the subcostal nerve and vessels, as you remember over here, the iliohypogastric and the ilioinguinal nerves. You can see now here also the left renal vein and the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. So that left renal vein, as you can see here, is squeezed between the superior mesenteric and the abdominal aorta. And this will affect the flow of the venous blood coming from the testis to the left renal vein. What you can see here is the right kidney, the right ureter, the, right, the left kidney, and the left ureter. Here you can see also, as we said, the inferior mesenteric artery here, the superior mesenteric artery here, the left renal vein is squeezed between the aorta and the, uh, and the superior mesenteric. So that is the main contents of the third layer are the two kidneys, their blood supply, and the ureter. You can see here the select trunk above the superior mesenteric, and you can see also the gent femoral in front of the right of the left psoas. So we put the two kidneys and the ureters in front of the nerves on each side of the flanks of the abdominal cavity separated from the muscles now by the vessels and the nerves. When we come to the fourth layer, we will put the two, the, 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 now the duodenum and the pancreas with the spleen which is marked by these black dots lying between the tail of the pancreas and the left kidney. So the arrangement will be the kidney, then the spleen, then the tail of the pancreas. This is on the left side. On the right side, the second bar duodenum is lying directly in front of the right kidney. So that's what we can see on four layer, the duodenum with the pancreas, with the spleen. That is the contents of the fourth layer. Before we show this uh, contents here, you can now easily see the third part of the duodenum, the fourth part of the duodenum, the second part of the duodenum. You can see the relations of the second part at the hilum of the right kidney, the right renal vessels, and the right ureter. It's very clear here. For the third part, you can see it is crossing the right ureter, the right genitofemoral, the right in, uh, gonadal vessels, then it will cross the inferior vena cava, it will cross the aorta with the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery deep to the third part of the duodenum. So most of the relations of the duodenum, especially the posterior, relation can be seen in that diagram. When we put the colon now, the anterior relation of the duodenum will be very simple. The anterior relation of the uh, third part, now we can see the superior vessels, which will pass between the two layers of the, uh, uh, of the uh, mesentery of the small intestine. You can, you can now orient or imagine many of the posterior relations of the pancreas when we come to describe them. You can see them over here. So that is the idea of layering the, posterior, the abdominal cavity. That is the duodenum, the second part. That is the pancreas. 
that's in the spleen, as I said, lying between the kidney and the tail of the pancreas, that's in the right ureter and the left ureter on each side, that's in the gonadal vessels here and on the other side, that is the genitofemoral again, on both sides. That what we call them the psoas group, the ureter, the gonadal vessels, the genitofemoral with the psoas, we call them the psoas group. So when we say the third pardudinum lies on the psoas group, this means the psoas major, the ureter, the genitofemoral, and the gonadal vessels. When we say the root of the mystery will cross the psoas group, it will cross the same structures. That what we call them so was group. That is the inferior mesenteric artery here, which take origin deep to the third part. Now we come to the fifth layer. So what we put on the third layer in front of the kidneys and ureter is the duodenum, the pancreas, and the spleen. That what we have done. Now the fourth layer. What we are going to add here. You can see the stomach, which does not belong to that layer yet. That is the ascending colon. That is the beginning of transverse colon and the end of the transverse colon. That is the ascending colon. So the first layer is mainly the colon here. The two ascending and descending with the transverse colon. Add to them between that rectangular here the ascending and the descending with the transverse, all this area is filled by small intestine. So any organ here will be related to the jejunum and ileum. You got the transverse colon here, will be crossing in front of the third part of the jejunum, the second part, then in front of the head of the pancreas, will be suspended to the anterior wall our anterior border of the pancreas, deep to the lower part of the stomach, and then continue the transverse colon in front of the left kidney to form the splenic flexure on the left side with the descending colon. So that is the relations of the colon to the second, to the first to the right kidney. That is the hepatic flexion. Then in front of the second part of the duodenum then in front of the head of the pancreas, then deep stomach suspended by the transverse mesocolon, then in front of the left kidney, forming a splenic flexure anterior to the spleen, that is the spleen here. As you can see, this pancreas in front of it, it is, that is the shadow of the spleen in front of the left kidney. So it is insinuated between the pancreas and the kidney. As I said, in that area, between it, this is the small intestine here. So at the left kidney, this small the right kidney, small intestine here. At the second part of the duodenum, small intestine here. Third part, small intestine, small intestine. Along that area, the, the, the left kidney, that transverse colon, this area for the coils of jejunum. So that's how we understand or orient the layer of the first layer with the small intestine in that rectangular between the parts of the large intestine. That is the fourth layer. That is the ascending colon. That is the transverse colon here on the other end. That is the stomach. That is the splenic artery above the pancreas. That is the splenic vein deep to the pancreas. That is the spleen itself. When it comes to the fifth layer, it is mainly made of the large intestine by its parts, starting from the cecum down, ascending colon, hepatic flexure, transverse colon, splenic flexure, then the descending colon and the sigmoid colon, forming a sort of quadrangular surrounding the small intestine. That is the main part of the fifth layer. So what we can see here, the ascending colon, the hepatic flexion, transverse colon attached to the pancreas by the transverse mesocolon, splenic flexion, ascending colon, the 
small intestine in the middle between the parts of the colon. That's the great momentum which covers the transverse mesocolon, part of the great momentum. That is the fifth layer. Finally, this is the sixth layer, which is the most anterior layer were coming from posterior to anterior. A section in the anterior lung wall and reflection of the parts on each side will expose that layer. That is the first thing you can see after opening the abdominal cavity. The main structures are the liver, the stomach, the greater omentum covering the small intestine and the parts of the great of the large intestine. Also, it is attached and covers the uh, transverse colon. And in the liver here, we can see the ligamentum tears, which is found between the two layers of the falciform ligament. That is the sixth layer. When you close the abdominal walls now, that is the abdominal cavity contains. Thank you. That is the end of the session.